diabetes has been described as a chronic progressive disease and um, one way street it is a form of a life sentence as it were once you are diagnosed to be a diabetic you just accept it and then you know that you will be a diabetic for lifetime and you need to keep taking tablets and uh, uh, testing your blood sugars and visiting your doctor and unfortunately every time you visit him maybe in 6 months to 1 year your uh, tablets keep increasing and uh, diabetes uh, seems to be going from bad to worse this is the normal story and the accepted story but recently science has shown that diabetes is not a one way street it can be reversed and uh, scientifically it's been shown that there are three ways of reversing uh, diabetes one is bariatric surgery that has also proven that after bariatric surgery you reduce weight and your insulin and tablet dependence for diabetes and sometimes total diabetes gets reversed next is very high restricted calories when you restrict your calories uh, to a great extent again you lose a lot of weight and then your uh, insulin uh, needs come down your sugars come down and your tablets come down and number of people have also uh, reduce or uh, reverse their diabetes through uh, you know market reduction in calories but that's a little difficult thing to, for all of us to do the third and the most practical way i feel is to uh, reverse diabetes using what is called a low carb healthy fat diet which i feel is a very practical diet um, which is easily doable sustainable and which has given great results this is what i'll be talking about today uh, i must say that you know at the time of independence we in india had a life expectancy of around 35 years that's about 75 years back and now in 2021 life expectancy in india is around 70 years we have almost doubled but has uh, really life span has increased but what about health span are we living a very healthy life for almost 70 years as uh, the average life expectancy uh, in india is unfortunately not we are not living longer but we are dying longer that's the unfortunate thing i must say here that you know what's the reason here our bad diet it's our bad diet that does not allow us to live but it's our good doctor who does not allow us to die so in the process the life span increases but maybe the last 10 15 years of a life we are all along suffering well here some figures from our country actually these are quite old i am told now india has uh, almost 77 to 80 million diabetics and uh, half of them or more than half because i am told in developed countries half the people are not aware that they have diabetes but uh, in india it must be much much more but four times this number so that means almost uh, 300 million people indians have what is called pre diabetes that means they are borderline and any moment they can become diabetics so that's the huge number now if you really go to see the uh, approximate total number of people killed in all the wars put together in the 20th century is about 100 million or so and i can tell you definitely all these diseases what i am showing on the screen they are called metabolic diseases these metabolic diseases primarily driven by diabetes has killed more people than all the wars put together in the 20th century that is some statistics for you well we all think that uh, you know uh, obesity diabetes blood pressure all these are all different diseases and we go to different specialists and get uh, treated uh, for them and we don't see them as one but actually all of them that is your maybe obesity hypertension diabetes autoimmune diseases infertility cardiovascular diseases atherosclerosis and dementia 
all have a common cause. The roots are the same. Only thing is when it shows up, we feel they are all different and we go to different doctors and doctors also take it and treat them differently. Unfortunately, the root cause is the same. The root cause is carbohydrate intolerance. And this carbohydrate intolerance leads to what is called insulin resistance and insulin resistance is the root cause for all these so-called metabolic diseases, all of them. So it is very simple. Why we are coming to this, that if you can go to the root and treat the root, all these diseases will disappear. So that, you know, when I say, you know, just change the diet or take this and don't take that. And I say everything, including dementia, Parkinsonism, obesity, diabetes, some of your autoimmune disease, infertility, all of them will get cured, everybody will be surprised. How is that? There's a one silver bullet for everything because the root cause is the same. For example, in case, uh, say, let's say we, you have a lactose intolerance or you have gluten intolerance, which is very, very common. now. What will your doctor advise you? Avoid lactose or uh, avoid gluten. Here, when you have carbohydrate intolerance, we all know that somehow the body cannot tolerate carbohydrates, sugars and carbohydrates. If you eat, your sugars go up in, in, a, in a diabetic or a pre-diabetic. In a normal person who is not carbohydrate intolerance, he can eat a lot of these sugars and carbohydrates and nothing happens. So when you become carbohydrate intolerant, the best way is to avoid or if possible, reduce it to maximum extent possible carbohydrates. It's as simple as that. I don't see any rocket science in this, but I don't know, somehow, um, learned people, doctors, scientists, nutritionists, nutritionists and di dietitians, I don't know, they seem, simply seem to miss the, the woods for the trees. So this is the problem. So basic problem for all metabolic disease is carbohydrate intolerance. But of course, we always blame our parents and will say, well, my, when I also got this uh, uh, disease uh, 25, 26 years back, I thought maybe both my parents had it, but naturally I get it. So I just accepted it and went, took some tablets and when, you know, it went downhill. But unfortunately, that's not true. Now, it, it has been proven that genes, of course, do play a role. I don't say no, but genes are not everything. The environment that you provide a gene is more important than the gene itself. It's like a seed. If you put it, throw it on a, concrete road, it is not going to develop into a seed and a tree. It will just wither away. But if you provided the correct soil and water and sun, and it will grow into a, a, a tree. So also, if you are genetically predisposed to diabetes, the chances that if you do not look after the environment, if you are, if, if you are obese or if you take too much of carbohydrates, definitely you're providing the environment for diabetes. To sprout. So that's what they say. Uh, genes just load the gun, but it is the environment that pulls the trigger. This can be proven as, as I've shown here, you know, in uh, identical twins, they have identical genes. If they were to have a different uh, types of uh, lifestyle, one may be in a village stays back and works, uh, you know, from morning to evening and has a healthy lifestyle. Another goes to the West, has all the Western uh, type of fast food and fast life, he'll definitely have different set of diseases. Well, here's a quote from Darwin. He says, to kill an error is as good as, you know, a service as, and sometimes even better than establishing a new truth. How true this is. Now, what has happened is we have all been quite, you know, we are all quite obedient and regular in following whatever the advice our doctors or the authorities give us. But unfortunately, following their advice, if something is, you know, going from bad to worse, that means there is something wrong in the advice. Well, this is a food pyramid. I'm sure you all, all know that. Well, the pyramids of Egypt are, uh, you know, world wonder. You know, wonders of the world. It's one of the wonders of the world, which is treasured and honored. Whereas this pyramid, the food pyramid, I think has done uh, a great, great disservice to humanity. This food pyramid, which is even today the official, the guideline 
for doctors and scientists and for all of us. We have, we have been told from our, our school days in childhood that this is how we should eat <clears throat> this. And we have all followed it for the last 40 years and see what has happened. The, the diabetes has you know, gone through the roof. It has exploded. All metabolic disease are going from bad to worse. And then that is the time when we should ask the question, why? I think this pyramid needs to be turned on its head at the earliest. Well, here I say, why? Well, now, one of the things, of course, is the food pyramid and the advice that's given by authorities. Next is what the industry has done. Once they say, you know, fat is very dangerous. Even now, you ask anybody to take more fat, you know, have the yellow of the egg. They're saying, go, go, doctor, what's wrong? I'll, I'll die of heart attack. Even a common man, it's just impossible. It is so much ingrained in us, that, that fat phobia. So once this fat was removed, this was uh, somewhere in 1980, this uh, food pyramid was officially first declared. Then, uh, then there's no taste to food. So what manufacturers did that, they got in sugar to replace fats and they hid sugar. Of course, sugar also has been declared, you know, as a, not as a saint, as a, but as a devil. It's, it's not good. And it's been, I mean, universally accepted. There's no controversy about sugar being good or bad. Sugar is definitely a toxic. But what uh, the food industry has done is that they tried to hide the sugar uh, in every possible processed food, almost 95% of all processed foods have these sugars. And to confuse and hide them, they have got six, 56 names in, uh, you know, uh, so that you, you will not know where the sugar is hiding. Even doctors, when they go through these labels, will never know where, where the sugar is, whether it's particular processed food has sugar or not. So this is what the industry has done. Well, now coming to diabetes, as you all know that it's, it is exploding. In 1980, when I was a student, only 5% of the adult population of our country was suffering from diabetes. And in the last um, 40 years, it has gone up four to five times that. Can you imagine? And with all the advice that we have been following, with all the latest tablets and treatment, the diabetes is simply going through the roof. There has to be some problem. And you know that it's a downhill course. And following all doctor's advice and medication, still people end up losing their vision, losing their kidney, kidney failure, heart diseases, amputation, and the rest. And then what we as doctors, you know, you know, I, as you know, in Narayan Netralaya at Raja Jinagar itself, we have more than 200 of these patients coming every day to see eight of our veterinary surgeons, most of them with these problems, and they seem to be going downhill. And whatever said and done, we tell them, keep your diabetes under control, keep your diabetes under control. We tend to blame the patient. We say, look, you are, you are, not, you are lazy. You are not following our instructions. You are not doing enough of exercises or uh, it's your fault. We always blame the patient. But I feel the problem is elsewhere. Another issue is that we all know that obese people are definitely, we know that they are sick people. But not all, 100% of them need be sick. Yes, if, well, he's normal weight, he need not have medical problems, no metabolic disease, that is wrong. 40% of them can have. There is a phenomena what's called TOFI, thin outside and fat inside. This is exactly what uh, these thin people suffer from. Although they are not overweight, they have got fat in and around the viscera which causes all the problems like hypertension, like diabetes, like heart diseases. We see a lot of thin people, you know, having these issues. This is the problem. And this is why even thin people suffer from metabolic diseases. Well, as I told you, what causes type 2 diabetes, there's no doubt, it is increased carbohydrates. The more carbohydrates we eat, the sugar spikes, blood sugar spikes, as the blood sugar spikes, you, the insulin spikes. And when uh, insulin is high and con you're constantly feeding your body every, almost every two hours, 
some amount of carbohydrates, the insulin remains very high and, they, they, and in, invariably we develop what is called insulin resistance. That means even though the insulin has gone up three to four times, it is not able to push the sugars out of the bloodstream into the cells because the cells have become resistant, cells have too much of it, and it's saying, no, we can't take it anymore. This is the problem. This is what is called you develop insulin resistance. But actually what we do nowadays is just test only the blood sugars. Blood sugars, by the time the blood sugar really shoots up, at least five to 10 or sometimes even 15 years earlier, the insulin shoots up by two to three times. So if you really want to catch a person early in a pre-diabetic stage, we need to test their insulin and not their sugars. Because if sugars, insulin will go up two to three times and keep the sugars down. When you test the blood sugar, it's in the 80s and 90s, but actually the insulin would have gone up three times. Insulin, insulin is working thrice um, more to keep that sugar down. So if you can catch that insulin is very, very high, that means the person is about to develop diabetes or he's a pre-diabetic and we could take action then and there itself. And that is at least for five to 10 years before the person turns up. So now the, there is some amount of controversy. Some say sugar is the culprit. Some say, no, sugar, not sugar. It is fat, the culprit. So there's been a war for quite some time between low carb and low fat diets. But let me tell you, friends, the facts now. Well, you all know how the insulin responds to different uh, macros. When you eat a sugar or carbohydrate, maximum insulin response uh, the body has to any carbs. Whereas to protein, it's almost half that and almost negligible amount when you eat fats. So if you want to really bring down your insulin levels or what is called insulin resistance, the only way to do is reduce your carbs and increase healthy fats. It is quite simple and straightforward. I don't think it's rocket science. I don't think you need a doctor to understand this. I don't know why still people resist it. Well, here you have what is the normal FDA recommendations. They recommend even today, your diet must be 50% carbohydrates, maybe 30% proteins and 20% fats. Whereas the high carb diets, they recommend 60% carbs, 30% proteins and very low fats, 10% fats. That's what's called a vegan diet which of course I initially followed that. But now coming to a low fat and a high, uh, rather high fat and a low carb diet, you take your fat up to uh, 65% or rather you eat as low carbs as possible, 10 to 15% only. Of course, you need proteins. There's no compromise on that 25 to 30%. And the remaining whatever you require, eat till you're full. You need not go hungry, you fill it with healthy fats. This is the, the, the diet I feel that does wonders. Well, you may ask me how and why. I, I want to tell you that our body is a hybrid machine. It's like a hybrid car. You have heard about that, one that runs on you know, petrol or diesel and also on electricity. It can switch from one to the other. So also, our body can either use carbohydrates, carbs and sugars, or fats to burn. But unfortunately, what we have been doing all along, almost from our birth, is that we have been feeding so much of carbs that body is just only used to burning carbohydrates or in the form of glucose. And we were taught in medical schools that glucose is the energy that is preferred. It is the energy that is absolutely necessary for our brain. And it is the energy that every organ runs on. Nobody spoke about fat as really as energy. But now, just think about this truck that you're seeing. It is a diesel truck. It is having its own tank. The, uh, the 
uh, tank which carries about maybe uh, 200 liters of diesel and it is carrying a huge maybe uh, 100 times that in the tank above but unfortunately although it is carrying 100 times more diesel in the big tank it is unable to use it because it's not you know the plumbing is not there and the small tank that its own tank every time it gets empty it has to run to the uh, station and you know refill it but what if it could have uh, you know plumbing done and use this fat or this diesel in the big tank as energy it could run for days and weeks and months without wanting without ha having to go to the the bunk petrol bunk so also our body can actually store glycogen that is glucose about 2000 calories whereas fats minimum it has about 200000 calories of fat but unfortunately this fat is stored away and it is locked up who locks it up it is the high insulin that locks the fat away insulin is a fat storing hormone insulin not only stores but also locks the fat away so when you eat a some fat and lots of carbohydrates the fat automatically gets stored as fat the carbohydrates what you have eaten gets turned into glucose whatever the body needs as energy is used up and all the excess sugar or glucose is converted into fat and it is locked away so no wonder when a person starts to become diabetic or a pre diabetic you will see that is he invariably gains weight especially around the belly and that is a first sign that you are likely to become a diabetic because the insulin levels have gone up so it has started storing more and more fat but then there is a way to burn these fats and the only way to burn the fat is to reduce insulin levels and the only way to reduce insulin level is to reduce carbohydrates to the minimum you just don't supply the body with carbs at all maybe just about 10% of carbs you give it so the body can't run on 10% of carbs it needs more energy slowly and surely body will develop all the enzymes and the cycles it may take a couple of weeks to burn the fats and once the body starts burning fats then there is no limit there you almost have i told you more than 100 times more fat storage in your body it can use it all the time whenever it's necessary and when your diet is low in carbs and high in fat you don't feel hungry that's the best part and the body is burning fat all the time and it uses while burning fat what is called ketones and we all know today that ketones are a much better fuel it's a cleaner fuel it is an antioxidant it has anti inflammatory properties and also it increases a basic metabolic rate wherein you burn more calories and that's how you lose weight simply your weight although you feel full and you don't feel hungry but you will be losing weight and once the insulin level comes down your blood sugar automatically comes down because you're not feeding any more carbs and your body is running on ketones and i must say that we i told you earlier that we were told that the brain only runs on glucose but now it has been proven that 75% of the brain activities can go on with ketones and every every organ in the body can use ketones as uh, as fuel and whatever little glucose that is necessary even in for the brain the liver manufactures liver can convert anything into glucose it, it can convert fat into glucose it can convert a protein into glucose around 200 to 300 grams of glucose the liver can easily manufacture so whatever little glucose is necessary for the body it will be done by the liver itself well this is the diet that i am talking about what we need to do is reduce carbohydrates especially the sugars to less than 10% of your total calories and proteins are absolutely essential so it may be 20 to 30% protein Proteins. you cannot cut down on proteins because you need strong muscles and bones so proteins are essential there is this it is a switch between carbohydrate and fat actually once you reduce your carbohydrate you will have to replace that with 
healthy fats, not any fat, then, then the, your body will soon start to burn uh, all the fats already stored and you'll, you'll start losing weight and your sugars will come down. So the solution is what is called low carb, healthy fat diet, which you start, if you start adopting, you will definitely see results. I'll tell you exactly how to follow that. And one other thing that you can do is what's called intermittent fasting. Fasting is an age old uh, thing that has been followed in our country and elsewhere in our religion and in all religions, all religions advocate fasting. Actually, it is a very good thing for the whole body. It rejuvenates the body. There is uh, so much of repair and um, uh, other uh, activities that go on. Uh, when you fast, these things can definitely do better. So what I do is that this intermittent fasting is that I give a big break between my dinner and my breakfast. That means I have an early dinner. Today I had my dinner before coming here at six o'clock and next day by eight, I have my breakfast. That means I give 14 hour rest to this body. But you may wonder, oh my God, I'll feel hungry. I need to eat at night. That happens only if you keep eating carbohydrates. One problem with carbohydrates is that the more carbohydrates you eat, so more hungry you feel. Within two hours, the blood sugar, of course, goes up immediately. The insulin goes up. It then brings the uh, blood sugar down. Then you feel hungry again. Then you need, need to eat all the time. And it is the opposite with fats. Once you eat fat, fat is so um, satiating and you feel full and you don't feel hungry. So you don't feel the need to eat. So I can easily go on for 14 hours. That's the easiest way. Of course, people do one day fast and two day fast. If you can, that'll be good. But intermittent fasting, that is 14 hour fast, shouldn't be a problem. It helps. It also helps to make the body, this, all the cells more insulin sensitive. Those, they're all good uh, you know, benefits of fasting. Of course, we cannot neglect exercises. Exercises are absolutely uh, important. But people may say, well, let me eat whatever I want as long as I uh, exercise. I must tell you here that you can never outrun a bad diet. Well, now coming to the practical aspect. So what are the things you need to avoid? Sugar. Sugar is culprit number one. There is absolutely no doubt on that. And it is accepted universally. There is no question mark. Well, sugar is toxic. Sugar is slow poison. Sugar is addictive. I must tell you that sugar is more addictive than smoking, alcohol, or even drugs. That's why, although so many of us know that uh, you know, sugar is bad, we just can't leave it because we have all become addicted to sugar. And other things, what we think, okay, sugar is fine. I understand, you know, diabetics, all doctors advise, you know, avoid sugars. But what about rice, wheat, bread? These are all common staple foods and how can we avoid? We must understand that rice, wheat, bread, you know, they are primarily sugar in a hidden form. Complex sugars, they are called. They may not spike the blood sugars immediately as you eat, but with just a matter of another half an hour or so, they will be broken down into glucose and your blood sugars will go up. So, if you are healthy, young and active, I don't say you should give it all up. You could have some amount of rice and wheat and bread. But if you are a pre-diabetic, if you are a diabetic, or if you do not want to be a diabetic, or if there is a family history of diabetes, you need to be very, very careful with sugar, wheat, and millet, and so many ragi, all these things, all of them spike sugars. This I'm telling you from a practical point of view, because... I, I don't know how many of you all know that I wear what is called a continuous glucose monitor. And this, whatever I eat, immediately, maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, I can check my sugars. I can check it every five minutes if I want. And then I know what spikes my sugars and what don't. So these I have tested and definitely they are not for people who want to you know, reduce their diabetes or reverse it or get it under control. Next, everybody says fruits and vegetables are excellent. You should have them regularly. Yes, vegetables, yes. We should not, I, I don't think we should put fruits and vegetables in the same basket, but usually they all come together. Fruits and vegetables, very good. But I must tell you, friends, fruits, especially the fruits that are available today are not the original 
fruit what actually nature intended maybe 50 or 100 years back i don't know if you can remember 50 years or 60 years back an apple used to be almost one fourth of its size and it, it never used to taste as sweet as mango today apple is huge and it tastes uh, sweeter and sweeter every year and most of the uh, that's the fate of all fruits they have been genetically modified they have been you know manipulated so the sugars are extremely high although a, a whole fruit is much better than fruit juice and i'll tell you why because when you make juice out of these fruits you are remo removing all the good the nutrients and the fibers and drinking only sugar syrup and the very fact fructose i didn't tell you so far this sugar even white sugar con consists of 50% glucose and 50% fructose, all white sugars. The sugars that's added to your ice cream and chocolates and other things are 50-50, all bakery products. So glucose is one thing that can be utilized by every cell in the body, whereas fructose can only be metabolized by the liver. So, so much of sugar or what when you take fruit juice, so much of fructose is there and the liver is unable to handle this is completely toxic to the liver, so much so that today we have what is called non-alcoholic fatty liver diseases, which was unheard of when I was a student just 40 years back. Most of the time, if anybody came with some fatty liver or cirrhosis, you could always say, oh, he's a drunkard. You go and ask him, um, do you take alcohol? Do you drink? Yes, sir, I've been drinking for 20 years. Yes, we were very happy that we know we made the diagnosis. But today, that's not the story. We see this fatty liver in children. And today, I must tell you, the commonest cause for uh, liver transplant in the US is a non-alcoholic uh, fatty liver caused by sugars and the fructose. So that's why I say uh, fruit juices and fructose is as bad, if not worse, than alcohol itself. Alcohol is also another um, uh, nutrient that needs to be um, metabolized only by the liver, and that's why you get fatty liver when you have too much of alcohol. And that's the same fate when you take fruit juices or regular sugar, your liver goes for a toss. That's why I say avoid, never drink your fruit. And even regular fruits, I can give you a few examples what you can eat, but the regular rich, uh, that juicy and sweet ones, better to avoid. Definitely processed foods, I already told you why. There's a lot of uh, hidden sugar there. They need to be avoided. Starchy vegetables, especially one that grows below the ground, like potato and sweet potatoes, although they may say they are good, definitely they spike your sugars. All the vegetables that are grown above the ground, you can have plenty of them. There's absolutely no problem. You can get all your nutrients from there. Another, I was telling you about good oils and bad oils. The seed oils are definitely a no-no because they are highly processed, high under uh, high temperatures, under high pressures, and a lot of chemicals have been added. And what they are called hydrogenated, dalda, heltarala, uh, that's the one. They are uh, called trans fats, and they're absolutely bad fats. And these are things that you need to avoid. Well, then what you can have? I told you non-starchy vegetables and for non-vegetarians, you can have meat, fish, eggs. Absolutely no problem. But you, uh, healthy fats you have for vegetarians, you have butter and you have ghee. And coconut is one thing that you know all of us love. It is so tasty. You can have it in the form of your chutney or curry and even oil is very healthy. Although people say that it has saturated fats, definitely not. There's no connection now scientifically proven that between your saturated fats and cholesterol and heart disease has been shown. Olive oil is another oil that can be regularly used. And if you want to snack, you can have all the nuts, but not dried fruits. And among fruits, you could have berries. They have the least amount of sugar, the um, uh, blueberry, red berry, uh, raspberries. These are the few fruits. Season. And avocado is one thing I must tell you. We used to say earlier that an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but now it should be an avocado a day keeps the doctor away. Avocado is considered as a miracle fruit and 
it is one of the best things that nature has provided us and that's one fruit that we can have in plenty but whatever said and then all these you must get it as natural as organic as possible especially meat fish and egg you cannot get them from caged animals you cannot get them from tied and tortured animals because from them whatever comes whether it be milk or egg they are all um, not very healthy if you can get it all from pasture raised animals you know um, free running chicken or wild caught fish nothing like it well then you will say how do i get my dosa idli and rice and you know chapati and all that i mean used to this i you say give up everything well there are ways to do it they say if you are out to beat a dog you'll surely find a stick well now you have got what is called cauliflower rice or broccoli rice or what's called fake rice see after all it's something that you need right there and the easiest way the other day one patient told me treat your vegetables like your rice so you make this cauliflower grate it into small things and it looks like rice you can nicely you know um, stir fry it with i told you, you can use all coconut oil and you can um, all those and make it very tasty put some coconut uh, um, grating into it it become very tasty and use it like a rice and over that use whatever curry you want to uh, with all the vegetables you want and then you, your stomach is full and if you want to have puris and uh, dosa you should not use the low, the other regular flowers you should use a very low carbohydrate uh, flower what now you get what's called coconut flower and almond flowers not easily available but you can get them and out, and you see there are uh, number of recipes how you make dosas and you how you make uh, chapatis and puris from them so you really don't miss your uh, your dosa and puri and chapati you can make them from all these and uh, eat them with you know good chutney coconut chutney get your calories from healthy fats so you don't feel hungry you get your tasty food taste either you get taste from sugars or you get taste from fats i'm saying switch from sugars to fats healthy fats and you will be eating healthy so what happens when you change your diet of course it will take a few weeks for you to get used to it initially you'll get a little disturbed but uh, but if you persist with it first thing that happens and what i noticed also your appetite your hunger your craving decreases this is the best part of you know a healthy fat diet it is so satiating you don't want to eat all the time and then automatically even if you do not want your calories come down whatever said and done because i say you eat healthy fat that doesn't mean you eat a ton of it you are not going to uh, definitely lose weight then you eat till you are full and eat when hungry but don't feel deprived so this diet itself causes your appetite to come down so you do not feel hungry at all and then automatically weight comes down once your weight comes down your blood sugars come down once your blood sugar comes down your insulin resistance comes down then all the other associated metabolic problems like diabetes fatty liver cardiovascular problems hypertension strokes autoimmune problems your um, sinusitis your migraine your infertility polycystic ovaries uh, erection uh, deficiencies all of this you may say oh my god can one thing you know stop all this problems yes i told you earlier there is one root cause for everything you remove it and all your uh, so called medical metabolic disease will simply disappear well the problem is we we all want a quick fix nobody is willing to change uh, behavior change their lifestyle do exercises we want bad bandages and uh, doctor also does not have so much time to sit with you and explain and tell you all this and so that you get convinced you also would like to, him to give you a pill and he is also happy to give you a pill that's why there is huge you know rush for all pills and nobody wants to change lifestyle what i'm trying to tell you is you need not follow the crowd do not be afraid to take the road less traveled you whatever i said you need not believe i just want you to listen to me with an open mind try it out for yourself if it works good if it doesn't work throw it out of the window that is the test well so far i've given you some facts and figures 
But as I say, facts and figures don't change behavior. Sometimes stories do. So I'll just take another minute or two, tell you exactly what happened to me. I was uh, declared a diabetic when I was 40. And uh, as I told you earlier, since my parents were diabetics, I thought it may be natural. And I kept taking tablets. And as I visited doctor every year, the number of tablets kept on increasing, uh, so much so that ultimately I, have, I was on ma maximum medical therapy and doctor even put me on insulin for a year or two. And of course, diabetes is not a disease that stays alone. They're all related. They're all cousins. Yeah, al along came my bad cholesterols, my heart problems, my kidney issues, my creatinine went up, I, uh, kidney stones, bladder problems, prostate problems. So much so that at the end of 25 years of diabetes, I was taking almost 12 tablets every day to control each one of them. Then I suddenly realized there's something wrong. I, I need to do something about this. is just a downhill course. They, we are not, nobody is treating my disease. So they are trying to manage it, but it's not even being managed. It is just a downhill course. And my weight kept creeping up. So way back, uh, maybe around two years back, I started searching for better options. And initially I hit upon what's called a vegan diet. I tried that for a year, a year and a half. And of course it is also a disciplined diet and it gave some good results. Uh, I gave up my sugars and uh, um, the bad fats. So my weight did come down. My, my sugars also came down, my tablets came down, but it just plattered off. And I suddenly realized that my triglycerides were going up, my, liver enzymes were going up. Then I started digging deeper and seeing if there were any other options. Then I hit upon what's called this low carb, high fat diet. And believe it or not, within two to three weeks of switching over, my triglycerides came uh, tumbling down. It was below 100. It was actually around 300 at one stage. And the good cholesterol, HDL went up, which I've never seen above 35 or 36 in my life. Now, I think last time when I tested it three months back, it was around 46. I must test this week again and see where I stand. And my weight came down further and the remaining tablets for my diabetes simply disappeared. I was shocked. And for me, it made so much sense so that I got so excited. So I said, uh, I should uh, share it with each one of you um, so that uh, you could consider it and see if it works. And uh, I hope it does. So what I'm trying to tell you is, first, shun sugars. There is no doubt about that. Restrict your carbohydrates, prioritize your proteins, and have healthy fats. If you can't follow all this, and if you, you and everybody need not follow it, but those I told you who have this history, who have tendency to put on weight, and you know, who are pre-diabetics, Definitely, you can consider it. But oh, if you uh, ever want to do just one thing after hearing this, I would say just give up sugar. Or at least cut down your sugar by half and you would be doing a great service to yourself. I keep telling my wife that please do not love anybody through the stomach. You are actually doing great disservice to that person. We are always wanting to feed somebody, force feed somebody, especially our children. And it's very unfortunate. Children, we actually introduce them to all these large amounts of sugars in the form of ice creams and candies and bakery products. And once they get hooked onto it, if, whether they put on weight or not, whether you're worried about their weight, you cannot get them out of it. And I feel that is very unfortunate. Now we have seen uh, diabetics having type 2, uh, I mean teens having type 2 diabetes. That's very unfortunate. And one thing I must tell you, the proof of the pudding they say is in eating it. Recently during this pandemic, what happened? Those who got this corona, who are the ones who got admitted? Who are the ones who got uh, into this ICU? Who are the ones who got, in, got onto the ventilator? And who are the ones who passed away unfortunately? The bottom line is one, one and only person who really got bad was the person with very low immunity 
and the cause of low immunity, of course, they may call it by different names. They say you have comorbidities and all of them point to diabetes and it is related metabolic problems. Diabetes reduces your immunity and that's why you check any of these uh, people who got serious. It's just not diabetes. They say heart diseases. They say age. They say overweight. With age, all these problems are there. That's where the age factor comes in. And all these problems are related, including the black fungus. If you really dig deep, the black fungus, as we all know, is because our immunity is so low. And today they say, talk about vaccination. Vaccination is not going to save you. They hope that by vaccinating you, your body will develop better immunity against the virus. So ultimately, it's immunity, immunity, and immunity. And I must tell you, sugar reduces your immunity. And even in a normal person, if you give them a heavy dose of sugar and test them, their immunity will go down uh, by more than half in the next six hours. That's how dangerous sugar is. Thank you.